Good afternoon. Welcome to Japan Unix Fan Court webinar, Aerial Laser Soldering Demonstration. This is the first of our webinars for 2022 for both the North American and Mexico marketplaces. I am Steve Hoover, product specialist for the Japan Unix product line for Fancord Industries. Fancord Industries is the sales representative and application development arm of Japan Unix in North America and Mexico. Also with us today is Ken Takahashi, sales manager for the North American and Mexico market for Japan Unix. Ken will be presenting the area laser soldering demonstration that you will see in a little while. We also have Shinichi Kitamiya with us today. Kitamiya is the Japan Unix customer support an application development engineer for Japan Unix and is based here with us in West Caldwell, New Jersey. Before the area laser soldering demonstration, Kitamiya and myself will present an overview and review of some of Japan Unix contact soldering and laser soldering technologies here in our lab. At the end of the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask us some questions and we'll have a brief question and answer period at the end. To our present customers, our future customers and our sales representatives that are joined with us today, we hope that you will gain some knowledge and understanding of the Japan Unix technologies that we are gonna review over the next few minutes. The first thing that I'll be doing is reviewing our Japan Unix benchtop contact soldering system. To review the typical setup that you see here, and when I say typical setup, this would be a minimal setup for contact soldering on a benchtop unit that you would need to begin soldering your application. It consists of the robot itself, which Japan Unix uh, partners with Genomi Industrial to build a soldering robot just exclusively for them and for exclusively for soldering. The system also consists of obviously the soldering head with the iron and the nitrogen nozzle. If we need to uh, uh, provide nitrogen to the, to the application for a nitrogen blanket for soldering and the soldering feeder that you see here to provide the solder wire for the soldering. Other parts of the setup will include the nitrogen generator that I mentioned, which for lead free solder will be required, a fixture to hold your application, blow off station to clean the iron during the operation as needed. And last but not least, the handheld pendant, which is used to program your XYZ locations to the solder joint locations and also your soldering parameters or recipe that you'll need for those joints. The handheld pendant is based on a jog and save uh, type of uh, programming. The last thing that you'll see here is what we refer to as the teach camera, which consists of the camera and also a monitor, which will expl explode the view of the work during both programming and also during the production process. With that said, and with the components of the system reviewed, we have set up on here a board to process a point-to-point -point soldering application.
As I mentioned, that was a point-to-point -point application moving from joint to joint. The Japan Unix robot can also, if programmed for it, can provide a line soldering type of programming to do that kind of application. With that said, I'm going to pass the baton here to Shinichi Kitamiya, who will do a brief overview of the laser soldering system we have here in the lab, which is based on a spot soldering type of application. So hello, everyone. I'm Shinichi Kitamiya, solar engineer and a customer success manager of uh, Japan Unix, North American unit. So I'm based in New Jersey to support all customers in the United States and the New Jersey. So now we are in the soldering lab in West Caterwood, New Jersey. Here we have all kinds of uh, soldering, uh, contact soldering machines and laser machines. Uh, with Fancourt team, we are able to provide a faster local service like a fixture design, running soldering test, a remote troubleshooting di diagnosis, on-site training, and the installation. So here I'm going to introduce uh, the showroom laser. So this machine, so this machine we call King Laser. The laser kit is integrated with a gantry robot and through the coaxial camera on top of laser head you may have a real-time view of the soldering process from the monitor here. Also, this camera has another function to read fiducial marks. And uh, so the laser is a class four laser, so we cannot see the laser directly. The front acryl glass door is coated with a film that you can see through the window without hurting your eyes by the laser reflection. Also, another excellent option I want to introduce here is the pyrometer laser power control feedback system that we call a thermal pro. So the pyrometer can detect the real-time soldering temperature and send feedback to the laser controller. The laser controller will then calibrate and adjust the laser power to keep the soldering process in a stable and the proper temperature. So it can prevent a burning or cold joint that will happen when the temperature is too high or too low. So here you may see this one, this part is a pyrometer, and then we can see a laser head and see the, that's the feeder here. Okay, so the demo board is the green board we're going to solder. So now we can uh, close the door. And now let's run a laser demo by pushing the green start button here. So from the monitor here, you may see the real time view of a laser soldering process. It is doing offset to the joints. So it's a line joints and now it's down. So this, the cycle time is a very short. So for each joint is a 0.4 seconds. So now I'm going to pass to uh, Steve Hoover to uh, introduce another uh, features like uh, uh, enclosure. Okay, uh, we're back again, and you're looking uh, at a contact soldering robot. Let me get into the camera there a little bit. Thank you. And uh, 
Sorry to switch you guys over from contact to laser to contact, but we wanted to break it up a little uh, to keep, your, uh, keep you engaged here with us. Uh, what we have here is a same benchtop robot that you saw in our, uh, my earlier uh, presentation, but we have some options on this one that I just wanted to show you briefly uh, before we get over to the area laser soldering demonstration. The first thing that you'll notice is a benchtop enclosure that we've built around uh, the, the soldering uh, robot to create a cell. Uh, Fancourt builds and designs these enclosures. Uh, depending on the application and what may be needed. Uh, and what you'll see in the front here is a uh, light curtain, which is used as the sa safety piece uh, to keep somebody from reaching in and stopping the operation should there be a uh, interference on the, uh, uh, on the robot as it's running. Other options that you'll see here, and I'll point, uh, as an extension of our teach camera that you saw in the last uh, contact robot, we have a fiducial recognition camera there, which we uh, can include as part of the software package for uh, fiducial mark reading during the programming. It can also be upgraded to a uh, AOI type of uh, camera and software to maybe do inspections such as uh, no, go, no, uh, piece there, not there, or maybe uh, reading a shape. Uh, to uh, allow it to be uh, the joint to be soldered. Some of the other uh, options here, if you see underneath, that is a, a, a nozzle for a fume extractor. We do have a fume extractor system that we can offer as part of a laser soldering cell. Uh, right here, you're seeing the nitrogen generator that you saw before. And last but not least, uh, Kit uh, EMEA touched on it a, a little bit, but Fancourt Industries is also a uh, fixture designer and builder, depending on what is needed for holding the uh, uh, work during the soldering operation. Uh, we can go soup the nuts from a design idea to total design to uh, machining uh, the uh, pieces needed and testing and tweaking out and uh, getting approval from you, the customer on fixtures needed. Okay. With that being said, and hopefully, uh, you've seen uh, some of our options and understand what we can offer. We're going to uh, hand the uh, webinar off now to Ken Takahashi. Uh, who will be presenting the area laser soldering uh, demonstration. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Again, is thanks for joining our Panko Japan Unix webinar. Um, you know, you guys, I hope you enjoyed a um, ripe demo at Panko facility, our contact the laser soldering. And now I wanted to present a, um, our latest and new Ilya laser soldering technologies. Um, okay. Um, so what is an Ilya laser soldering? is, um, um, you know, Kit actually so, uh, showed you guys about the regular solder spot and the, uh, what we call a King Razor enclosure. So we do have a, um, I'm sorry. Um, this is the uh, unique uh, beam spot and the shape that is we call the area laser. So it's, um, this is a, uh, a regular spot. And then uh, we do have a, uh, uh, this is kind of like a square shape and uh, we call it area laser. We could do the area or uh, rectangle sh shape. And then um, the biggest difference is, let me go to the next page. So our, you can imagine that is the regular spot is to do some, you know, uh, laser leaf for individually point to point. And then area laser be able to cover like an entire area. Let's say like, uh, this is our, you know, our SMT chip components. And then you could do our like a selective lift roll. That's probably the best award that we could, you know, address with. 
So I, I give you some uh, like uh, uh, movie clips that you know you can imagine a little bit about the, what the looks like on the uh, um, surface leaf roll. Okay, so that is the, uh, the, the movie clips, and I want to show you the uh, next one a little bit more. And that's, that's the another one is the um, uh, IC tip. And we uh, had the uh, screen printed or the you know, solder paste, a kind of preteen. And uh, this uh, whole area are you know, irradiated by the laser leaf row. Okay. And we also are, can actually try with selective, you know, a reflow and with our all kind of our, you know, uh, selective components. This is one of our, you know, strip the wire one. And then one more movie going to show you the uh, comparison. They uh, talk about a speed and a single spot and an alia laser. So you see this on the side and the single spot. And the same stuff, and do you can of course there you know, uh, reflow at at same time. I would say ten times or twenty times faster, so you can save a lot of uh, a um, a cycle time and a UPH on it. Um. So this is the, uh, our, our, you may actually interesting about the temperature profiling is it is very similar to the reefer oven. So um, we can bring it some a peak um, to the uh, set it up and temperature. Then um, our laser sorting itself has our, you know, 10 different steps to be our, our able to deliver our uh, temperature and talk about a wattage to, to be uh, converting to the temperature. And then that's going to be the delivered uh, uh, energy to the uh, substrate. So bringing up some idle a little bit and ramped up to the bring it a, a peak, and then um, um, throw cabin down or cool down a temperature in order to be avoiding to damage to a, uh, a components. So this one is going to be the idea to showing you some uh, real, you know, graphing a temperature. We are actually using the um, uh, pilometer to check in the a temperature on it. So you see, this is the uh, our measurement point. This is the uh, uh, lots of like uh, chip components to just test pieces coupon. Okay. So we, um, uh, our pilometer is be able to the, uh, our measure our actual targeted uh, components in our location. So our, we will show you our, our another video clips and including a software and then pilometer it will be, again, is the uh, um, be able to try to the uh, set temperature, your target temperature. And an or you can just uh, monitor it, and uh, you can use actually for and kind of inner rock to the uh, our high end or row end. Uh, you don't want to go to too high or too low, and then um, you know the temperature is going to be able to stable in that you know right in the middle is a kind of nominal working temperature area.
So uh, Fancode has an uh, um, King laser, which you just saw that in the kit, actually driven to some present. Uh, this is a laser solder head. And then um, our temperature control function, meaning is we call summer pro, which is a pyrometer. And then also have a uh, uh, patented sorting manager software. So fully integrated system that you saw it in the fan code of our facility. So we are happy to running your application like a process development. And then we can our, uh, monitor all the our, you know, sorting process quality, our video clips and the temperature, our, you know, graphing, all stuff and you will be able to get it. So the uh, next will be the call sorting manager. So this whole our monitor is in a software. So you can actually have it this one. And then this is in exactly where you see our, our during and a laser sorting process. So our kosher camera are built in over the head. So this is a simple um, through hole pad and pin and then pad itself. Uh, and then a, this is in a wattage and a temperature, uh, you know, and then this, you can set the power on it. And then uh, you can hit the upper remit, a roller remit and target temperature where you want to set. And then uh, this is all stuff and we'll be able to, let me show you the video. So, and you're going to be able to see it. So that's a real time actual speed or uh, probably less than a second. And then now the you know actual temperature on right here is the uh, monitoring. It's coming or like a peak and a solder fed and a little cool down and a come back. So our recipe, our you know starting condition is our you know it's very flexible. Um, you can actually set our each point, each steps, and different our starting our conditions recipe. So. So this is another one is the uh, say um, we put it on to the you know again is the measuring actual power or uh, and then um, it, there is a two functions so one is the uh, you can just leave it then to the monitoring about the where to go so and then another one is the uh, um, they could they could go for put the target temperature and then the wall laser will be automatically or uh, closing and by themselves are uh, you know they're Pilometer sensing in an actual temperature. Oh, you need a little more power. Yes, they do. And then maybe too much, and they will be reduced the power. That's all old cruising. So this is what they're saying. Some little characters are different. Sorry about it. Okay. So um, a little bit more like uh, you know, want to talk about this? Why LED laser are, are needed? So. This is in the uh, typical SMT or RIND process. And then we always have in a selective uh, starting process by a regular spot or different spot size. And uh, of course it's contact sort as well. And then uh, we have launched about uh, you know, six, seven months ago and it is a, a new area laser technology. Or, and then uh, because of the, uh, the needs and demand is they came from actually our, our customer end, your side. So SMD components, oops, sorry. Yeah. Okay, now you've seen it this. So um, of course it, you're gonna have a, like a big uh, reflow chamber or, uh, you know, or the flow or sort of wave. And then I have a um, um, you know screen printed or pick and place and a whole kind of big process. And then um, uh, area laser are very are selective. And then um, you can always go to our set and our actual uh, targeted temp, you know their uh, components if you need it on there. So you can you may want change our uh, different you know uh, wattage a power distribution on that particularly uh, components. So, and then, I'm um, oh, sorry, yeah, let me go this. And then what this is a showing about um, uh, rocker heating or selective reflow, what we call. 
So it's a very little uh, per consumption. So the people talk about some are, you know, uh, carbon neutral. And then um, it's a big heating down here. You have a uh, 12 kilowatt or maybe initial driven that kind of, you know, timing. And then um, uh, refloor about the half of the way. You know, our regular, you know, contact or laser solder will be about the, also the half of from the uh, ovens. So area laser is very, very little per consumption is. You have lots of like, you know, components are surrounded on the board and you may want it to do just here in a selective lift row. And then the biggest difference is a regular spot and the area laser are is the um, um, beam or shape and then also power distribution. So it's a flat and top hat the uniformity or power distribution. That's the area laser we call. So also um, inspiration and then saving space and then wanted to give you some idea that what the looks like. So our typical into ovens or the, our you know wave solder equipment is the uh, maybe our closely about you know three meter. So and then now we can do some like a very selective standalone our types, which is like this one here. So rest on like a one meter square, and then now we also be able to our integrate some fully conveyor lines like this. Uh, let me go back a little bit. Yeah, sorry. So this is an, uh, our idea that's showing about some sizes. So probably about this kind of size or maybe this kind of size. Okay. So our, another thing is the uh, our showed you the um, uh, sorting manager and uh, our pilometer our capability and that kind of software be able to are you know monitoring in real time even you are are you know staying at their headquarters probably in the US but you are, are maybe you know mass production facility in outside of the US or maybe the Asia or somewhere around so um, we can actually uh, provide that solution that software and then lots of the things to be able to hook up on your NES and then um, your or mother facility or head, head office are be able to check in about the real time rate of the productions or uh, if it's uh, happening something on the equipment maybe error occurred or something or a problem down there they could they could find it and it will be reporting and then we can go back into the, uh, um, you know, analyzing as what's happening in a software. Okay, that's what we call it now, of course, um, traceability, but a software. And we can uh, support and uh, globally, um, of course, as the US has our, you know, fan court and then our team and uh, our field support people available in Mexico too, and Canada as well. And then if you have an uh, outside of our North American area, uh, we're happy to support it in every country. Um, you know, easier for Japan is, uh, or any way you want. Okay, that's we are here. So um, I wanted to uh, show you a little bit more a online uh, demonstration capability, capacity, I'm sorry. And um, so this is what the uh, looks like. So. Um, like fan code show the uh, multiple camera and the demonstration are equipment available down there with the lots of like a fully are uh, trained technicians and then there is an expert the sorting process so we happy to get your our actual substrate and then we learn about the in, in the process development and then uh, we will be able to show you the real time our you know sorting our process and quality and we can chat, we can talk, or using, of course, his major online tools like uh, Zoom, something like this. And then um, uh, we can bring in an extra stage and then we're happy to put the package and then back to you guys uh, for the variation. Okay.
Um, thanks again for the, uh, the listening uh, my presentation and, and uh, we had uh, almost 49 years our you know Japan units itself. And then please contact uh, uh, domestic sales support and Steve Pubar and Shinki Kitamiya. So this is an address. And then uh, uh, before we go to the uh, um, our question and answer time, I uh, wanted to give you some uh, our little heads up that it's uh, upcoming webinar schedule. So we're gonna run another uh, session in Mexico, um, starting a rab live demonstration. You're gonna see very similar, um, you know, our the the live a uh, in the, in the lab. So the, our Mexico office have the same in a fan court and Unix people down there, and then uh, we can deliver at the same our performance and technology, test the demo, and then you know installation our field support in uh, Guadalajara, Mexico. So um, they're gonna run their live demonstration the same webinar style on uh, March 9th in Mexico in Spanish. And we will be back in uh, our US Canada chapter in uh, new technology volume two will be coming on uh, April. So data will be advised later. So thanks again, our everyone. Um, this is all a uh, presentation today, our myself. So let me returning it to the um, Steve and then uh, Banco the Lab team, our uh, and then a welcome to the uh, our, our any question. We're happy to answer you. Thank you very much, Ken, uh, for the area laser soldering demonstration. Uh, before we go to the question and answer period. I'd like to uh, just show you the boards that we soldered uh, during the laser soldering and the contact uh, demonstration. So, Kit, if you could um, pull the uh, uh, board off the uh, co contact and just show to the camera, just to show. And we, we didn't use any voodoo here. It's the same board. So this line is just to solder, and you can see the back side. See the barrel fill is 100% and the back fitting. Okay. And we'll also show you the uh, board that we did via the laser soldering. So the application we have done is to apply solder to the pads. They're very small, mm -hmm. nine dots here. Thank you, Kit. Okay, now we'd like to just uh, open up the brief uh, question and, and answer uh, period. Uh, if you could uh, post your questions via the chat, we do have some already. Uh, myself, uh, Kit Amia, and also uh, Ken. We'll uh, do our best to uh, answer what you come up with here. The first question we have is, uh, do you preheat the substrate prior to soldering from uh, uh, JL? Uh, the answer to that is yes, we have done that for uh, specific applications where we have built into the fixture or the plate holding the work uh, a uh, heating plate or heating elements for a certain part of the board if you do not do not need to heat the whole entire PCB. Uh, so yes, but it's application to application and uh, it's typically part of the fixture uh, during uh, holding during the soldering process. Another question from uh, MS and I think I'll let Ken uh, answer this question, uh, Ken. If you can hear me, uh, yeah. thank you. Uh, the question, Ken, is how big is the actual area being processed or soldered at one time? And I, I believe the gentleman is referring to the area laser soldering uh, lens. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, there is the, uh, a lot of ranges. 
and uh, or you can actually try with, I mean, the uh, the spot itself. So the the largest are, are uh, earlier right now around, I would say, sixty or mm square. That's going to be able to are arranged by the custom range. So our, our, we could go a little larger than that, or maybe even like a bigger range is like 100 mm square, then we can still put the mask on it if you don't want to the, uh, you know, our leaf flow at some particular zone, you know. And Ken, that would be related to the lens of, of the, uh, okay. Yep. So it would be a lens change out or a lens design. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, our next question from TH. Are there any systems that have a in-out belt system versus hand loading one unit at a time? Uh, referring to the conveyor, I believe, and I think Ken had showed that a little bit uh, during his demonstration. And the answer to that is yes. Uh, we have built um, a few systems with conveyor uh, for laser soldering. Uh, again, it's an application case by case basis. Uh, what we'll do, TH, is we have a short video of that, and we plan to, uh, we'll send that to you tomorrow, uh, so you can see an example of a conveyor uh, moving in and out of the laser soldering uh, enclosure or safety enclosure. The next question is from EL. Uh, can you define the position of the pyrometer measurement point? Uh, I think I'm going to hand that one off to Kitamiya, and uh, Kitamiya will uh, explain and answer that question for you. Okay, so the answer is uh, yes, we can. So we can locate the pyrometer measuring point to any position you want to measure. So far for this application, we just locate the measure point, the same as the laser, laser point. So the temperature will be the same, will be uh, the temperature of the solar joint. Okay. Thank you very much, Kit. We have a, another question from uh, SK. Um, have you guys used the area soldering method for anything other than PCBs, such as uh, tin plated copper terminals? I can tell you that uh, from a general soldering standpoint, we have done applications uh, for some terminals in the past. Uh, with air, areas, area laser soldering, I'm gonna ask Ken, maybe if he could jump in again and uh, provide some feedback to SK on that uh, question. Ken, did you hear uh, the question? Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, answer is yes. Our, you know, it's still the uh, the kind of uh, the circuit or a board. Let's say like a fret circuit board, FPC. Uh, that is the one of those. And then um, uh, we could do the um, some like using uh, uh, copper terminals or ceramic. Our, it's only like require like a really high power uh, to uh, reflow it. So. Um, Either cases or any type of the uh, substrate material are there, that area laser will require to the uh, either pre tint, which is meaning is a, a solder paste on it, or are what any type of a preform. So, a one of, that is the biggest difference that is that you saw at the uh, demonstration in front of you at the laser solder or at the pen core. That is the using a quad wire, which is solder wire. So laser is gonna shoot the, uh, our irradiate to the substrate first. And then a pad pin example is through hole. Our, they are uh, generated heat as soon as the uh, laser irradiated the power on the, from the over the top. And then you can actually deliver the solder wire and that's gonna be lit for it. So area laser are, you know, it's a big shape of the, uh, you know, square beam is gonna drop down from the top so meaning is solder, solder material has to be already, or, you know, registered, uh, sorry, in the sitting in the nest, something. So about, you know, any type of the uh, platform, we try the ceramic and the copper and then the FPC, uh, that kind of stuff. 
Yes, we did. Okay, thank you, Ken. Uh, we have a, another question from MS. Uh, does a lot larger field, 100 millimeter versus 60 millimeter, uh, take longer to process? Uh, does it reduce available power uh, per, per square millimeter? Based on the area laser soldering uh, technology at this point, uh, a larger field that size, uh, 100 millimeters, even down to 60 millimeters, would take, uh, we would what we'd have to do is take uh, multiple shots at that in order to solder those different areas. Uh, as far as the, um, the power uh, per, square, per square millimeter, we would probably be using a 45 watt uh, laser to do that. And uh, it all depends on what setting we would use to, uh, in order to uh, make the solder reflow uh, properly uh, for that area. And then also without affecting uh, other parts of the board or what may be around there. Uh, but with a large field like that, we would definitely need to take um, multiple, uh, multiple shots at it to do uh, uh, several areas before we could take, uh, fill that whole field and solder that whole field. Okay, I think uh, that's uh, all the questions we had at this time. Uh, again, if uh, we haven't answered anything clearly, and maybe I haven't, I'm sure, but uh, we certainly can take emails. Uh, if you could reach out to us in the PowerPoint that Ken had provided with our email addresses, uh, we'll work with you. Um, please also be on the lookout for advertisements and reminders about future Japan Unix fan court uh, webinars coming up in 2022. As Ken had also mentioned, on March 9th for the Mexico market, we're going to have a live demonstration of contact soldering with gantry and benchtop robots. Uh, and then also uh, in the United States and Canada, we have plans for another webinar sometime mid-April. So we hope to see you all there. And we hope that um, this uh, uh, little chat today has provided you with some further information and we look forward to working with you in the future. So from Ken, Kitamiya, myself, uh, please have a nice evening.